In this Walmart Vision tutorial, we're going to go over how to make a mesh through code. The simplest mesh that we can make would be a triangle, considering that all meshes are made up of triangles. So I'm going to make a new project to start off this tutorial, and I'll call it um, Procedural Mesh Triangle. Okay, and I'll say Create. Okay, this is Unity 2020, and this is a brand new um, project. And it is here in this project that we're going to make a uh, 3D mesh that's a triangle by code. So let me just add an empty game object so I can attach a script to it. This is going to be our, our triangle mesh, all right? And uh, right now there's nothing there. And just so we could see where we are in the scene view, I'm just going to add a circle and my favorite color orange for Omar Vision orange. Let me just turn things around like this. Okay, let me zoom in a little too and set the camera to focus right here, Control Shift F. All right, so uh, I have an image to kind of help explain what our goal is here. So let me just get you up here like this so I can see ya. And here is a flat image because the triangle that we're gonna make in 3D is gonna be a flat triangle. Now we're gonna try to make a triangle that goes from A, D, and C. All right, but we're going to do it through code, and then it's going to display over here. So we want, the we want the triangle to be offset from that dot, 0, 0, 0. Anyway, let's go look over here again in Unity at our empty game object and compare it to one that is a 3D game object, like um, a cube. Okay, so a cube has a, a visual in the scene because it is it has a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. So one of the things we're going to have to make sure that our script does is create a mesh filter, which holds the data for the mesh, and a mesh renderer that that's, um, displays it in the scene. Let me set the camera to here. Control Shift F. Bah, sorry about that. All right, so that's what we're going to have to have in the scene. Let me delete the cube. So on a triangle mesh, let us start off by creating a script. So let me create a C-sharp script. I'm just going to call it triangle, tri triangle mesh, OK? And then I'm going to put it on our empty game object. Hello, hello. I'll put it on the empty game object, and then let's open it up to start editing it. It's not going to be that much code that we have to do. All right, let me clean this up here, and let me clean this out here. All right, so a mesh, we have to think of all the things that um, Unity is going to need to define this 3D triangle mesh, and the things that it needs are, it needs the vertices, the points in 3D space, and this has to be a vector 3, since the points are in 3D space, an array of vector 3s. And to make a triangle, we need at least three vertices. So we'll make our vertice, our vertice array of size 3. Then we also need to tell Unity how to connect the points to make a triangle. So we'll need a, um, another array of integers that are indexes to the vertices array. And I'll call that uh, triangles equals new int 3, because there's at least three points to describe to describe one triangle. And then also, in addition, we're going to be able to tell Unity um, the texture mapping coordinates if we wanted to draw a picture on a triangle. So pictures are 2D, so that's why we're going to use a vector 2D for the UVs. That's called UVs when we draw pictures on a mesh. And that has to be the same size as the vertices, because basically we're saying for each vertice, where do you get your information for the picture? So that also will be an uh, array of size 3. Hmm. OK, good. Now let's make a private start. And the first thing we're going to have to do is define the mesh data. Whoops, it's not a function yet, but we're going to make a function called define mesh data, OK, which will define these arrays here. So let's make a function for that, private void define mesh data. And inside of it, we'll just define our vertices to make our triangle. And I'm just going to refer back to the picture here. So let me just, not that picture. Oh, no. This picture. So I'm just going to refer back to our picture here to get a reference idea of how we're going to set the values for vertices A, D, and C. When we define the vertices and when we define the triangle, the order that we define the triangle in is going to matter to Unity. Because if we go in a clockwise motion, that tells Unity which side is the front and which side will get you know actually drawn. And the other side of the triangle is going to be culled, back face culling. Unity won't draw the other side. And that's the way it saves uh, CPU time. Anyway, so let's define the three points, A, D, and C, 
that are in that picture um, as a reference here. So the first vertice, vertices at zero, is going to equal a new vector three. And let's see, if we go offset from zero, zero, zero to A, we're gonna offset from that. Now, the amount that we offset, let's probably make that a variable so we could change the size if we wanted to from one variable, offset. Um, this will be a float, offset. And we'll just say that that's 0 0.5, okay? So now here we could just use the variable offset instead of putting 0 0.5 and hard coding it. So this is um, minus on the X and up on the Y, positive on the Y, minus X and positive Y. So this is minus offset and offset, positive Y. And we're gonna do nothing on the Z. All right, so that should make the first point. And also we want these to come off, not always in the center of the scene. We want them to come off as an offset from our, you know, empty game object's location in the scene. So we'll just add that. This dot transform dot location. I mean, position. <laughs> okay, so we have that. Now vertices at one, the second point, new vector three. Now let's see what this one's gonna be. Ugh, I keep clicking that. That will be D. And D is plus in the X and minus in the Y. So that'll be offset comma minus in the Y offset and nothing on the Z. And the same thing here, we'll just add the offset of wherever the empty game object is. So it's around the game object. And the third vertice of our triangle's points is going to be defined as vector three. Let's see what that one's gonna be. One, two, and three. Over here is minus in the X and minus in the Y. So that would be minus offset comma minus offset. Nothing in the Z plus this dot transform dot position. Right, so those are the definition of our three points in 3D space that we're going to have, y, x, okay? Now we have to define the triangle, which is connect the dots, all right? So for a triangle, a triangle already has three positions. The first dot of our triangle is going to equal the first vertice, zero. So the triangle um, values are indices to the vertices array. Triangles at one. The second point of our triangle is going to be the vertice one, and the third point of our triangle is going to be vertice two. That should make the triangle. And now for the last part, we want to be able to define the um, universal mapping coordinates, the UV coordinates, if we want to map a material to our triangle. So the way we think of that is almost the same way as we think, ugh, darn it, almost the same way as we think of um, the vertices. See this picture of the bear? That's kind of like a picture that could get mapped on a triangle. Now a picture is rectangular, but there are corners of the picture, and we want to match, but we want to match up the corner of the picture to the vertice. All right, so a picture we're going to say starts from this corner here is zero, zero. So for the first vertice, that would be UV at zero to match up to the first vertice, vertice zero. UV at zero is going to equal a new vector two, and where should UV zero get its picture from? Let me not. It should get it from this corner of the picture up here. So if this is zero, zero, that's um, zero on the X and up on the Y. And we could think of the picture as zero to 100% here. So zero on the X and all the way up on the Y, okay? The second UV coordinate is gonna equal vector to, let's see, our second vertice is right here. So that is, this is zero, zero. That's one on the X and zero on the Y. So that would be one comma zero. And then for our third UV, two equals new vector two. That's easy. That's this bottom corner right here, zero and zero of the picture, zero comma zero. There, so now we have our mesh data. Now we want to actually um, get the mesh, well, on our transform object, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to put a mesh filter and a mesh renderer on here. So we'll use add component to do that. But let's call that function, um, let's call it set mesh or get mesh, doo -doo -doo -doo. get the mesh. And I'll just say that this is mesh mesh equals get the mesh. Now let's make the function get the mesh, private void. Well, actually this has to return a mesh. Get the mesh, get the mesh, man. Boom. So first thing is we have to add meshes. So let's add a mesh. Um, let's have our mesh variable M start off equaling null, and then we'll return M at the end. Now in the job we have to do here in this script is to actually get the mesh defined. So first thing we have to do is say that um, 
we have to add a mesh filter. So let's say that mesh filter mf equals this dot game object dot add component. We have to add a component to our object. We have to add the mesh filter to it. Okay. And then we also have to add a mesh renderer. So our mesh renderer r -r 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 -r, mr equals this dot game object dot add component mesh renderer. Okay, so we'll add these two components through script. The components are things that you see. You see with the add component button, we'll add a renderer and a filter. So that's what those two lines do. And now we just have to decide um, what our mesh is going to equal something from the mesh filter as the mesh object, right? So we have to see. Um, there's, a, there's a thing though. If we are in the editor, then we're going to use the shared mesh of the mesh filter. And if we built this game and it's running as a built game, then we'll use the mesh as the, as the um, mesh filter object. So we're going to have to check to see which way is Unity running. Is it running as the editor like it is here for us right now? If it is, then the mesh filter will e equal the shared mesh. So mesh will equal the mesh filter dot shared mesh. All right. And just in case that's null, you know, we'll allocate it. MF equals MF that shared mesh equals a new mesh. And then M equals MF dot shared mesh, just in case the shared mesh is null. And OK, if we're running a compiled game, not from the editor, if we're running a compiled game, then M is going to equal MF dot mesh. And we'll just say, just in case it's null, if M is null, we'll have to allocate it. So MF dot mesh equals new mesh, and then m equals mf.mesh. Mesh, mesh, mesh. All right. So that makes sure we have all the objects here. Our main goal is to get the m, the mesh object, m. Now we have the mesh renderer too, and in case we want to, we could set the material on it. We'll do that after. First, we'll make sure this works. All right, so let's see. We define our mesh data. Now we're going to get the mesh, and it went through this. And then we're going to have to set the mesh data to the mesh. So I'll make another function called um, set mesh to set the data on the mesh, okay? Boom, 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 set mesh. And in, in set mesh, it's kind of easy. Let's have the call to set mesh over here. Set mesh, not muck. set mesh, and we will pass it the mesh. And let's get the mesh in here, mesh M. So the first thing we'll do is we'll clear all the data, whatever is there, we'll clear it, okay? Then we'll set our new data, vertices equals our vertices array. And the mesh dot triangles will equal our triangles array, and the mesh dot UV will equal our UV array. There, that was simple, right? Now the only thing we're going to do from there is the mesh is set. We're going to tell Unity to recalculate things, like recalculate the um, the normals to say how the triangle should be lit up, recalculate the bounds. So. Unity knows just how big this mesh is, the extents of it. And if you're using shader graph stuff from the um, universal render pipeline thing, the lightweight render pipeline, we're going to recalculate the tangents for that. OK, we never know. So we'll re recalculate all three things. Then this mesh should be ready to show itself. So if we look through our code, it's going to come in. It's going to define the mesh data. It's a simple triangle. Then we're going to um, put the mesh render and the, and the mesh filter here and return a pointer to the mesh, depending on if you're in the editor or not. And then after that, we just set the mesh data to the mesh. So this should work. Let's see what happens. Let's cross your fingers, your legs, your toes, everything, <laughs> and go into Unity. Because we just wrote all that code. Now we're just going to see if it works. I'm going to press play. And it's coming up. And there it is. There's a triangle. And if I go to scene view and try to look around the triangle, you can see the triangle is in 3D. And it's only rendered on one side. If I go to the back of it, there's nothing. That's called the backface culling that I was talking about. So this side is being drawn and not the other side because I define the points as one, two, and three. Now let's put a texture on there, okay, to see if our UV mapping thing works. So this bare picture that we've been looking at, let me just add it here to the scene, to the um, project, and let me make a material for it right there. Okay, and tell the material to use that picture, all right? Just want it to be bright, bright, bright. And then in our triangle mesh script, let's let the user tell us what material they want to use. So I'll make a public variable for material. All right. And then that way I could tell it to use that material right here. When the script updates, I just drag and drop the material there so my script knows about it. And then in the script, where do we set the material? The material goes on the renderer. 
So here's our mesh renderer that we just added. So let's just add a thing that says mesh renderer dot material equals our material. Okay. And we'll save it. And then we'll try it out and see if the bear picture gets drawn on it. Press play. And voila, the bear picture gets drawn on it. Let me see from seeing view, you see? Like Gizmo's really big. Let me just turn off the 3D icons there. And there you go. That's our bear picture that we drew on and we just did a 3D mesh. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I wanna show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.